That was one heck of a press conference. Frank's press conferences are usually boring, but when he starts calling out journalists by name for criticizing the team, you gotta love it. Then he lies about Fakaya Tomori. Man, this press conference is one you gotta be here for. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Gaff Guys View, and today we're gonna preview the Luton versus Chelsea game in the FA Cup. The press conference for that game. That game wasn't even covered. It was all about Frank Lampard's future and unless you lived under a rock, in 30 seconds I'm going to give you guys a quick review and then we're going to get into that press conference and then we're going to talk about what's going on, what lineup we can expect and my score prediction but you need to stay tuned for when Frank Lampard took shots at Liam Tillman, I can't pronounce his name but you know the deal, you know the guy. Honestly, it was amazing. Stay tuned. So, the latest on Frank Lampard's future in 30 seconds, nice and quick. Abramovich and Marina aren't happy with Frank. They both want to get rid of him, but there's no backup plan. Andrei Shevchenko and Avram Grant are in the picture, but none of the first choice options are available now. The first choice options exclude Allegri. He's not in the running. Brendan Rodgers, Nagelsmann, Hassan Hootl, and the one, the only, Tuchel. Yes, that's the deal. From now on, anything else you've heard is a lie. This is verified by Christian Flack, The Athletic, and Simon Phillips brings you all the deal. That's done. That's 30 seconds, right? So, for that 30 second review, before we get into the press conference and Frank starts firing shots like he's out here like with some AK-47, I want you guys to hit a like button. And if we get 200 likes, you guys are absolute stars. Honestly, if you're regular viewers, there's 6,000 subs. So we should be hitting 200 likes, no problem. So come on, help a brother out, it really goes a long way. Subscribe if you're new, and comment below. Is Frank Lampard the right man to take us forward? Personally, he isn't for me, but let's get in the mood of the video. Lampard states that there is no option to agree a deal for Fakaya Tomori. But Fakaya Tomori has left. He didn't say this in his thing, but as you can see over here, Fakaya Tomori is in Milan airport getting pictured. Maldini comes out openly and speaks about Fakaya Tomori and Ria and Milan register him in their Serie A squad. Great news for Fakaya Tomori, you lot know my stance already. If you don't, there, I've made videos on it in the past week. At the end, I will tag one where I explain how I feel about this Tomori deal. I don't like that he's leaving because we got Rudy and Christensen, but that's for another video, so go check that out. Frank Lampard got very defensive in this press conference and I'm not gonna lie, the pressure is getting to him. So he's like, oh, some of the players weren't up for the fight, some of the players weren't on it. And if you watch the press conference, he's very, very defensive. He is on edge. That beard is coming out. He's a little bit aggressive. He's jumping on every line. And I don't like it because he almost implicates the players. He's like, yeah, uh, I've dealt with this pressure before. Um, the, some of the players haven't, we need to put a positive atmosphere around us right. If the results are bad, Frank, you know the drill. People are going to be fuming, people are going to be angry, and you're going to get stick. The only way out of this is by giving us hope. Hope and positivity starts on the pitch. It does not start with us. You give us a reason to be positive, not the other way around. I'm done with it. As you can see, the comments are right here. Frank Lampard calls out Liam saying his articles are negative. And when he reads it, he doesn't find them as objective. Excuse me? Excuse Wait, what are you on about? Liam is very objective in my opinion. He's one of the only journalists that is actually realistic about what the scenario club is in right now. Because they're not defending him. And then he called us social media pundits. Clearly, I'm a social media pundit. Big man, I watch a lot of football. When it comes to Chelsea, I watch every game and I most probably re-watch a big majority of these games. And I analyse these games because it's what I do. I love this club. I'm sorry. Okay, I make time. I'm very busy. I've got another 40 hour a week job and I study in my part time. But I make time for Chelsea because I enjoy it. I wouldn't have a channel if I didn't enjoy it. So to call me just a social media pundit and di disrespect it in that way. Like it's some kind of this. I'm not gonna lie to you. I know more than most of the fucking pundits on TV. And it's the truth. Just because I never played professional football does not mean I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to the game. The amount of football I've watched in my lifetime is enough for me to master what I'm watching, okay? Every time and then, I learn stuff. Of course we do. It's what it is. 
But I know what I'm seeing in front of my eyes for my team right now is not good enough. And it's as simple as that. No one can convince me this is Chelsea level of football. What we're seeing right now is pathetic. And to call us social media pundits in a disrespectful the way, the way he said it, is a joke. Because what? Jamie Redknapp's meant to be a better pundit than me. Jamie Redknapp's views are meant to be better than me. Out of that whole game, Jamie Redknapp picked out Callum hudson Ladoy as the negative. Is that the best you could have done in your time in that lovely studio with all those analysts, with all that footage that you have at your, pro at your hands? That's the best you could have done. Well, of course you're going to protect Cousin Frank. Why not mention your cousin's tactics? Seriously. Frank also threw the players under the bus by saying some of them did not know how to handle the pressure. He tried to track back on these words, but for me, that's pathetic. You're, you're meant to be the leader. Jürgen came out yesterday and defended his man. Jürgen came out. He said the pressure's not getting to him. The pressure is got to you already, my friend, because you wouldn't be speaking to this way. This was the first time where Frank Lampard officially lost control of the press conference. He's usually articulate, usually controls the room. Today, he lost it, and it was evident. For me, it was embarrassing. Frank, you're better than that. You're a bigger man than that. Stop it, okay? We will back you in the sense that we want you to succeed, but I don't want you to succeed so badly when you drag my club down. Either fix the situation or get sacked. One way or another, Chelsea will be here without you tomorrow. It's sad that I have to say that, but it's the truth that some of you need to understand. But enough with the stupid press conference, because that press conference really rattled me today. The game against Luton is going to be an interesting one. Today's team that we're going to try to predict is going to be very difficult, because I have no idea what Frank's going to do. He can't lose this game, but at the same time, we've got Wolves coming up. What is he going to do? For me personally, it's going to be a tricky one, but I think we're going to win it comfortably. And I think there will be a statement from the players. These lot are good enough to make a statement against Lewin. If they're not, he needs to go tomorrow. Literally, I don't understand if we can't beat Lewin at home. It will be embarrassing. So this will be the team and we're going to start with a goalkeeper and a defence. For me, Kepa gets back in goal. Kepa done really well in, his, in the other round. He needs another chance. Let him play. Right back, you put Aspilicueta. Aspilicueta needs to be solid and come back. Reese was injured in the last game. I don't want to see him playing. You want a centre back partnership of Christensen and Zuma. Because evidently Zuma is now the backup option. Left back, I want to see Everson. I do not want to see em uh, Ben Chilwell anywhere near this team for the foreseeable future. I want Emerson to put in a great performance and become our number one left back. Because Ben's been really letting me down recently. To the point where I'm actually angry at Ben Chilwell. Because I think it's 40 million wasted or 50, whatever we spent on him. Midfield is going to be a little bit difficult to guess because we've got a lot of options there. I think he's going to go with Jorginho at the tip because Jorginho hasn't played in a while. And he's going to want to get some games under his belt. He needs it. Then you're going to need to get Billy Gilmore into the pitch. Who has There's been a lot of pressure for him to play. And especially the way Frank talks about him, you think this guy's in his plans. But sadly, I haven't seen it. He's going to be in there. And I think Kai Havertz is going to get a run out because Kai needs to play and get back into confidence. So hopefully a couple goals for Kai will be great. Mason Mount and Kovacic will be rested for the midweek fixture against Wolves because you know both of them are the first names on the team sheet. But I don't know what formation we're going to play then. So it will be hard to predict, but I think that midfield is good enough to beat Luton. Front three is where I start going, mmm, ah, mmm. I have no idea what we're going to do because personally thinking, reality speaking, on the right-hand side, we're going to have Callum hudson Odoi. I think. I think Callum's going to get a run out. I think he needs to play, and Frank will use this as an excuse where, okay, Frank, start, he started two games in a row, we're not going to play him against Wolves. So I think he's going to start on the right. I think Hakim Zayesh will get rested, or maybe Zayesh will come in. Actually, I think Zayesh will come in instead of Pulisic. Pulisic will be the one that's rested. And Timo will go through at number nine because Tammy was not good enough when he played the other day. And I, so, to confirm, I think the front three is going to be Cho, Zayesh, Werner. And that's going to be good. Hopefully, they get that like handful of goals and they'll be nice and get the confidence up. But that is important. I'm not going to lie. This performance is going to be critical. Pressure on, this result is going to be integral. A loss, he could get sacked. An unconvincing win, he could get sacked. We need to put in a great performance, and Frank knows that. So he's going to count on these players. So guys, the match review will be present, and I'm not going to lie to you, I'm actually contemplating maybe doing a live stream. I need you to let you guys, like, 
Tell me in the comments below, do you want to see a live stream straight after the game? Maybe half an hour of me just talking to you guys, answering your comments, because that's going to be coming soon. When I get my laptop, uh, which is arriving, it's already been pre-ordered with all the streaming service and everything. It's going to be great. I'm really excited to do that. I might have something to add in guests. We're going to start football shows. It's going to be popping. I'm not going to lie. So hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And come on, you blues, because we love Chelsea and we need to get that in our heads. And yes, I said it. I'm a great social media pundit, regardless what any of you think.